Hey there, I am just putting this video together to uh, just show you some new servos that I just got my hands on uh, today. They just arrived from overseas. Um, they're going in this new 35% Hangar 9 Extra 300 um, that I'm going to fly uh, mostly iMac, but I'll be doing some sport flying and a little 3D with it too. Um, so there's the six servos there. Um, I've got a Futaba 9157 that is going to go on the rudder. Uh, there it is on the left and uh, the 1256 on the right. So I originally ordered the uh, Savox 1270 TG series servos. Um, they're the new uh, high voltage um, 400 and I can't remember, 44 ounce, uh, something like that um, servos. But unfortunately, um, the factory, I talked to a couple distributors and got an email from the factory forwarded to me and they're basically um, kind of waiting on parts right now from uh, it must be one of their suppliers um, and they aren't sure um, from what I've been told elsewhere that they might be discontinued so I got tired of waiting after seven weeks and decided to change my order and uh, I picked up these 1256 TGs for me I prefer the titanium geared servos uh, much over a brushless servo I've never worn out a, cor or a, a cordless motor or a a motor itself, um, pulled motor um, inside. So to me, the coreless, like the amp draw, isn't a big factor. Now, having said that, if you were running high voltage and you were running a 40% plane or bigger, um, you are going to be pulling a lot of amp draw. So you could save on some battery weight by uh, by definitely going the brushless way. But again, uh, I've heard uh, you know the typical reports on a typical metal geared servo that. You know, after a few hundred flights, they do develop some slop, and you got to change the gears out. So, the titanium gears really um, excel in that area, and uh, I've heard nothing but good things about these servos right here. So, so this is the uh, Savox SC1256 titanium geared servo. I just want to uh, show you what it looks like out of the package. Um, very, very, very impressive. Um, I mean, this is a $59 servo. There's a hundred and fifty dollar servo, the Futaba S9157, and uh, I have to say this is impressive. This is the most high quality boxed, high one of the highest quality feeling servos I've ever put my hands on. Um, it just, I don't know, there's uh, not really a way to describe it, but I'm very impressed with them. Um, now I haven't run them yet or anything like that uh, in the plane, but I just want to show you what they look like out of the box. So, So again, there it is, Savox SC1256 TG. Uh, this here is aluminum, uh, the orange part there. And you can see uh, they advertise the 4096 resolution. Um, again, cordless servo, the only kind I'll buy. Um, the 4096 re resolution is a bit of a moot point, uh, personally, because my radio, my Aurora 9, uh, won't do it. Um, I don't know of any radio actually that will do uh, that resolution. It's possible the brand new Futaba 18MZ will do this, um, but I'm not sure. So, again, um, it is what it is, but uh, there's the top of the servo. Sorry, upside down. And uh, in the package here, let's just pull it out. I know this isn't super exciting for anybody, but they come with decals, which is awesome. Um, they come with a nice typical plastic hardware set that I never use in the giant scale planes. I always use SWB aluminum arms, but nonetheless. And uh, here, this is an impressive um, hardware accessory package. You can see these bolts here. Like, look at the size of the heads. Um, and they are Allen keyed. They're not the, the uh, um, regular Phillips that like to strip out in a lot of the other brands. And they even come with some nuts, some nylock nuts, which is pretty cool. It's got a couple different sets of hardware in there, depending uh, how you want to mount them. So if you want to go the large bolt with the nylock nut route to mount them, I mean, all the better, right? And uh, Or you can have the typical uh, traditional grommet set up with, the, with this wood screws uh, with no nut. So an impressive little package here for $59, I have to say. Um, for those of you that are going to message me and ask, where did you get them for $59? I am not at liberty to say. So you'll have to continue looking on your own. Um, okay, so what I want to do here, um, I do have 
uh, my digital fish scale, but I don't have the apparatus hooked up because I haven't built one before. Um, I even have my, uh, wherever it is, my watt meter as well that I can hook up, but I'll maybe do that if I want to do a test. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't have any good servos to compare. Um, I've got some Power HD 9150s that I'm running in a 30% uh, uh, edge over there, but uh, I've been running those for two years. Awesome servos, very cheap, 30 bucks each. Couldn't be more impressed with those servos, uh, but they're an analog servo, they're not digital. And uh, yeah, anyways, they're, they are what they are. So other than those, I don't have any. I sold all my 5955s to replace them all with these uh, new Savox. And uh, so anyways, for the rudder servo here, I've got a Futaba 9157. Again, $150 servo, $59 servo, so it's not really a com fair comparison. But I just wanted to show you um, what you get for $59, which is extremely impressive. Um, so I've got it powered up with an, op um, an Optima 9 here. I've got uh, 2300 A123 on my Aurora 9. And I just want to show you here to start off with um, the gear slop on the 9157. I mean, I can't even, like, there's nothing there. It fights all, like, the whole time. There's, there's, I I can't make the gears uh, wiggle at all. Um, again, this is a very, very high-end servo compared to a lot of the other ones out there. Not that this isn't, but they're not in the same class. I mean, this is 468 ounces at 6.6 .6 volts, and this is 300 ounces at 6.6 .6 volts. Um, so, again, it's uh, it's kind of a moot point, but uh, the speeds are similar. This is rated at 0.14 at 6 volts, which should be around 0.13 at 6.6. .6. This is rated at 0.15 at 6 volts, and again, this will be um, 0.135 for speed on 6.6 .6 volts. Um, so, no slop in the in the 9157 that I can detect at all. Um, I'm gonna just get real close here. You can see there's just a hair, but I wouldn't necessarily call it slop because you notice it fights back as soon as I push on it. I've owned a lot of servos in the past, and I'm not going to mention any brand names, but I've owned a lot of servos in the past that when you deflect them, you can deflect them up to five degrees. Like, look at this. I can even just crank on the thing, and it doesn't move. It stays right where it's supposed to. So if a servo were to move five degrees before actually holding its torque, I mean, that's not very good for holding your surfaces, especially in a snap or in any high-energy maneuver, right? So... Um, I was impressed with that. Um, so again, there's maybe you could argue that there's a, a little bit of of slop, or maybe it's gear backlash. Um, there's probably not much gear backlash on a titanium geared servo, though. They don't heat up and expand as much as a metal gear does. This is a metal geared servo, by the way. Um, but anyways, still very very impressive um, because this has less slop than any of my JR8711. Um, I have an 8711 on the rudder that was totally sloppy after a few years. Um, I bought it used, so I don't know how good it was new. But again, I mean, this thing, this thing is way, way better in that regard. Um, now, I, nothing bad about JR. They have changed the gear type in the 8911 high voltage servos that they just released. But again, they're they need to be tested. Uh, they're brand new, and uh, who knows on the longevity. But uh, for me. I prefer the uh, titanium gears over the brushless, like I mentioned earlier. Um, if you're running a high voltage setup uh, in a 40% or, or in a big bipe, I mean, maybe you'd really benefit from the brushless with the less current draw. But again, you're not going to wear out a motor um, that I've ever seen. Uh, maybe after, you know, a thousand flights or two thousand flights, but most of us don't own our gear that long anyway. So. <laughs> Um, anyways here, uh, what else was I going to show? Let's just uh, do a, you can see the the return on the centering is phenomenal. You can see just the tip of the V there. And it's just, like it's perfect every time. I could glue on a, um, a skewer and show you at, you know, 10 inches out um, if we really want to get technical, but these things are impressive for for uh, their, their price. Um, again, they're similar rated speed. This one is rated uh, about 
uh, 0.14 instead of 0.15 going by the 6 volt spec. So it should be a little bit faster, but you can see here they are, I mean, that's as close to identical as you can get. Now it might be a hair faster, but I mean, really, it's, it's about the same. Um, so centering is the same. Uh, you, you can watch the centering on this 9157 if you want. But it's, I mean, it's solid. Um, these are well-proven servos. I've never read a bad report on these ever, um, nor have I on these either. But uh, anyway, so it's not a fair comparison, like I said, because this is a 468-ounce servo at 6.6 .6 volts versus this one is 300 ounces at 6.6 .6 volts. But I just wanted to show you that a $59 servo is very impressive compared to this $150 servo right here. Uh, I can't wait to fly it and to see what it does. So on that note, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know.